It is a great pleasure to be here today to celebrate to celebrate the 20th birthday party of the Epoch Foundation. Um, Victor gave a very eloquent picture or, of how Taiwan and the Epoch Foundation uh, have uh, contributed to leadership uh, in the personal computer industry. My dream for the next uh, decade is to see the world move from personal computers to personal robots. And Taiwan and the Epoch Foundation could be leaders uh, in, uh, in this next technological re revolution. So we have come a long way since, um, uh, this is not working. Um, can we try again? Uh, so we have come a long way since um, uh, the uh, word computer, uh, the, the word robot was introduced by a playwright to denote hard and repetitive labor. Now, some of us fear the idea of a machine doing man's work, uh, while others are very, very excited by this. However, our dream to create a machine in our own image that is smart and obedient um, goes all the way back to antiquity. From the technological marvels of antiquity, to science fiction, and today's personal robots, which are becoming increasingly more lifelike, <laughs> robots are making a huge impact in everyday life. Robots are affecting our lives from small and near, for example, in robot-assisted um, surgery, to large and far, for example, in exploring the universe, from manufacturing to homes. Robots contribute to knowledge and science and make the world a better place. Now, progress in computing, fueled by Moore's law, and progress in hardware, um, uh, which has led to the decline in prices of sensors and actuators, um, as well as the increase in the quality of hardware, have really brought the age of robotics here today. Today, robotics is a multi-billion dollar business uh, with huge perspective for growth. Um, robotics has a 50 year of industrial robotics experience and a 10 plus years of uh, robots fielded um, uh, in unstructured environments. Today, there are 10,000 robots working uh, for the military, and there are over 5 million Roomba robots uh, that are working to keep, keep uh, people's houses clean. So this is, this is amazing progress, and uh, there are amazing opportunities for the future. Now, in order to have a good robot machine, there are many challenges. Robotics is at the confluence of many different technologies, um, sensing, actuation, uh, computing for decision-making, and human-computer interaction. All of these technologies require supporting software and hardware, and the end result uh, is a move towards machines that are becoming increasingly our collaborators, machines that are becoming increasingly autonomous and more capable. So the 2020 robots that will be with us will be our collaborators. They will collaborate with us in science, in education, at work, and in everyday life. And I want to um, give you some examples uh, next uh, that show you uh, how this, um, uh, this vision for 10 years down the ro uh, road is actually totally feasible. So let's start with robots as collaborators in science. Uh, robots can make a huge difference uh, in how we predict phenomena at unprecedented scales and accuracies. And here is a, a picture that uh, gives you an example of what I have in mind. Uh, this is a picture of a tree canopy in Morea that was taken by one of our flying robots. And uh, this picture was, uh, these um, sequence of pictures were taken because there is an invasive species of trees that is taking all nutrients and is killing the local trees. But you can't really tell where the invasive trees are from the ground. You can distinguish them only by leaves, and that has to be done by very uh, close imaging, close to the tree canopy. So lead, this leads us to the concept of eye-in-the-sky computing, where the robot is essentially a remote uh, eye that gives us the opportunity uh, to peek into hard-to-reach places and observe uh, animals and habitats uh, in ways that um, um, that, are, uh, that do not disturb them. Uh, in this ne next segment, you see another example of our um, 
scientist collaborator hero. Uh, this robot is called the Falcon. Um, it's like a little helicopter with eight rotors. And this robot has the ability to fly very close up in this um, uh, sequence of movies to groups of whales and observe them in ways uh, that have never been possible without disturbing their natural um, behavior. Um, the current state of the art in whale science is paper, pencils, and binoculars uh, from a cliff. So you can imagine that having an instrument that brings the eyes of the scientists so close um, to the place of the action um, uh, is giving them uh, huge um, capabilities. In Roger Payne's words, the instrument is beyond anything he ever imagined uh, possible. The same concept of taking uh, the, the remote eye can also be applied to other hard-to-reach environments. Uh, for instance, uh, in the deep sea. And this is very important for many reasons, uh, as we all know today. So this is an example of our robot uh, imaging a coral reef. Now, imaging in water is actually very hard because uh, most pictures in water turn out to look like this. They're blue and green, and you can't really tell what's in them. What we would like it, uh, to have is color, because color tells us where the fish are, uh, what is happening to the habitats, what is happening to the human structures that we put in water. Yet color is very difficult um, to capture in water because it gets absorbed, and it gets absorbed in very complicated, nonlinear ways. Um, you can see in the chart what happens to color at one, two, three, four, and five meters. Already at three meters, everything in water looks um, uh, blue, uh, green, and black. But by understanding the physics of light absorption in water, we can compute how much light of each color gets absorbed between the camera, the subject, and back to the camera. And we can compensate exactly for that um, absorption by using a multicolor uh, illumination device. And the end result is like going from black and white TV to color TV, or in the case of water, from green and blue TV um, to multicolor TV. So the top row in these pictures um, shows a sequence of pictures taken uh, with uh, traditional technology. The bottom row shows um, uh, what we can do with our eye in the sea robots. So since we can now capture color in, in water, we can do imaging in water as we please, we can imagine building ocean observatories um, that will give us the opportunity to experience the 20,000 leagues under the sea, that will give us the opportunity to understand a mysterious world and understand the consequences um, uh, uh, that uh, our, um, our environmental damage uh, has in water and um, uh, longer term. So robots will work with us uh, beyond uh, science. Um, they have huge opportunity to improve um, uh, workers' conditions, especially as it pertains to ergonomics and safety and to the productivity and quality of, uh, of um, manufacturing and agriculture. So the problem with manufacturing and agriculture is that um, workers have uh, workers have extremely difficult um, uh, conditions. Uh, oftentimes, they, uh, they stay in very uncomfortable positions for hours on end. Well, we can imagine a remote hand, much like we've seen the remote eye, uh, that a, a human worker could control from the distance, much like you see in this movie, uh, where a worker is controlling a robot, uh, a real robot, with a uh, wheel attached to it. The worker has a small replica of the, ro uh, of the uh, robot, um, and it executes the movements that the robot uh, could apply in the world uh, remotely. Uh, so this is an extreme case of using teleoperation, and we can imagine applying these concepts uh, to impact how manufacturing, agriculture, and other types of jobs um, can be done. Now, besides improving the, um, uh, the working conditions, robots can also help in other ways. Robots can assist in manufacturing by automati automatically locating uh, parts and tools, uh, bringing the parts and tools to the location of the assembly on demand, 
and uh, further providing um, support for automating uh, operations such as assembly, painting, and so forth. Now, what you see here is um, just a very small prototype of uh, assembling a truss structure that was done um, at MIT in my lab. But this actually shows you that um, the idea of using robot teams for serious manufacturing is not that far away. Robots can also be used in agriculture. Um, and uh, to demonstrate uh, this vision at MIT, we have built an autonomous greenhouse uh, where uh, plants um, augmented with computing, sensing, and networking keep track of their um, soil conditions and of their own growth and call upon robots to water, harvest, and uh, tell them uh, how much fruit they've got on them. Um, so this is a picture that shows you the robot platform uh, that um, provides this kind of agricultural support. Uh, we essentially have a mobile robot with a manipulator. Uh, there is a watering device as well as, um, as a camera that helps the robot locate uh, fruit. The plant, as I said, has to be able to talk to the robot, and therefore the plant, each plant pot is um, extended um, with computation.